today's webinar is about uh, Expressive, its uh, modules uh, and its core, um, the, the course available right now and the one on the roadmap. So the presentation is divided into three parts. In the first one, we talk about <clears throat> Expressive, so with a company overview and a brief history. Then we we'll move uh, to the products. Uh, we will have a core overview. Then we'll speak about the modules and the naming convention. Um, and then some more details about uh, a few selected cores. And in the last part, I will uh, um, show how you can use it, uh, namely through 80 commands or through programming. Before starting, a few words about uh, Inaltech. Inaltech is an independent distributor specialized in MCUs and IoT. We are focused on design. Um, Inaltech has more than 30 years history, <clears throat> and we are one of the first and biggest distributor of Expressive. We are very focused uh, on, um, on Expressive, so we are here to help you to select uh, the best uh, module to start and to support you through, uh, through the development. Okay. So, Expressive is a company <clears throat> um, born with a strong focus on IoT and recently also artificial intelligence, IoT. It was founded in 2008. In 2013, they released their first uh, Wi-Fi module, the ESP8089. It was meant to, be, to work uh, with uh, MPUs. <clears throat> in 2014, they released their first uh, um, standalone module, the ESP8266, and in 2016 they released the ESP32, which right now is the most common uh, um, core uh, of uh, Expressive modules. In 2017, Expressive was awarded uh, um, as the best wireless uh, and RFIC by EE Times. Uh, then they started a partnership with Baidu, and in 2018 they reached their first 100 million uh, um, ICs shipped. <clears throat> in 2019, TSR reports that Espressif has become the Wi-Fi leader worldwide, and uh, the year after, Espressif started uh, artificial intelligence development with the ESPI which is a framework for face recognition. And uh, the same year, uh, they had the um, IPO. So uh, Espresso became a public company, and in 2021, uh, they had a market cap of $1.64 billion. Uh, um, from the beginning, uh, Espresso had a strong focus on open source, source so software. And so um, <clears throat> much of uh, its development has been done on, uh, on GitHub. Um, after a few years, uh, the most active contributors were then hired by Expressive, and that's the reason why the global offices of Expressive are in some <clears throat> uncommon places, like Brno or Campinas. The reason is that after a few years of activity, Expressive hired the most active uh, um, developers on GitHub. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so Expressive is right now the Wi-Fi um, module leader, and there are many reasons for this. Uh, here you can see a few of them. The first one is that all its modules are certified, especially the one based on ESP32 have certifications that cover almost all the world. They have a very long longevity of 12 years from the release date, and it's pretty uncommon in a, such a fast-paced environment like uh, the Wi-Fi world. Another strong feature is that it's uh, strongly focused on open source. You will find uh, uh, the software and the firmware uh, on, uh, on GitHub. It's open hardware, meaning that you can find the schematics of uh, all the modules uh, <clears throat> and the evaluation kit. And with the new cores, uh, which are based on RISC-V, you can even say that Expressive has become an um, open architecture company. So you can also um, know about the architecture of its cores. And for sure, especially at the beginning, a very interesting feature is the price. You won't find another Wi-Fi module with the same price as Expressive. So these features uh, are one of the reasons why Expressive has become the uh, world's uh, Wi-Fi modules leader. Okay, let's move to the core overview. 
Um, <clears throat> in this slide, we uh, I will show the the course which are in mass production. Right now, there are uh, two main uh, groups: uh, um, the Wi-Fi course, uh, the Wi-Fi only course, and the combo Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, course. At uh, at the minute, there are not uh, no, there aren't any uh, Bluetooth only modules. As we will see in the next slides, uh, on the roadmap, there is uh, a combo Bluetooth 800 to 154 module, but right now there are only Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi Bluetooth modules. On the screen, uh, you see the two classic expressive cores, the 8266, released in 2014, and the ESP32. The first one uh, is a Wi-Fi only module, um, but it's not recommended for new design because it has a few uh, security flows which are not tolerated uh, in the IoT world anymore. So right now the most common core is the ESP32 which is a uh, dual core and he's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth 4 module. In 2019 the ESP32 S2 has been released. It, will, uh, it replaces the 8266, is a single core module but I won't spend many words about, uh, about it because in 2020, other two um, very interesting uh, cores has been released. One is the S3, which is actually the, the new ESP32 because it's a dual core. It has the same architecture and it has a strong focus on artificial intelligence. So it has a, a hardware accelerator for artificial intelligence. <clears throat> but the same year, uh, also, the ESP32 C3 has been released. It's the first uh, RISC V module by Espressive, and uh, it's meant uh, for a uh, low-budget application. And, and uh, yeah, it's a single-core module. Now let's take a look to the ESP cores on the roadmap. So these one are um, not in mass production. Uh, of, uh, of a couple of them. Uh, uh, engineering samples can be requested, but uh, they are not uh, easily available right now. The first one uh, I will talk about is the ESP32 C6, which is uh, very similar to the C3, but uh, it supports uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi 6. <clears throat> and um, we will see uh, in the next slides why this is very interesting for uh, IoT applications. And the same year, the H2 has been released. It's the first non-Wi-Fi module by Espressive, and it's a Bluetooth uh, 82, uh, 802, uh, 15 for uh, combo modules. It has already been uh, uh, ZigBee and Thread certified, but the main reason why it uh, has been released is the, the Matter protocol. We had a webinar about this topic, but um, I will uh, um, mention it uh, in a few slides again. In 2022, so this year, a couple of new cores have been announced. One is the C2, which is uh, basically identical to the C3, but with lower specs. So it will have less memory and it won't support the DLE mesh, but it will be a combo Wi-Fi Bluetooth 5 module and it will have an even lower price. And the other very interesting module is the C5. This will be very, very similar to the C6. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it will be the first uh, expressive core with uh, uh, dual band Wi-Fi 6, so both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So these are the cores which uh, has been have been announced, but are still not in mass production. Okay, so before diving into a few more details about, uh, uh, about the cores, Let's take a look at, uh, at the modules. Uh, we suggest um, um, to use uh, uh, the modules, uh, the certified modules, and not the, the SOCs. So um, in the beginning, Espressive course didn't have embedded flash. So the module was also a way to have integrated flash. And the standard uh, Espressive modules, which uh, still uh, uh, holds for DSP32 course, are uh, the Vroom in which you have an ESP core plus uh, flash um, of uh, 4, 8 or 16 megabytes. And then the, if, you, uh, if you add a PSRAM to the, to the flash, 
you uh, you will get will get uh, the the rover module. And the first one, the room, uh, is meant for um, general uh, general application, while the second one, especially for Ethernet and uh, multimedia applications. So these uh, were the uh, standard uh, modules, the classic modules. Then a few years ago, also a, a new module has been introduced, the Mini, which is uh, basically identical to the Vroom, but uh, it is a little bit smaller and has uh, only the uh, smallest amount of flash, so the four megabyte. Um, a few words about uh, uh, the module naming to help you navigate the Expressive Catalog. This is the old naming convention which uh, holds, uh, still holds for the ESP32. So you have uh, the, the, core, the core in the first part, so ESP32, then the package and the PSRAM. So you can have a Vroom, Brover, in this case you have the additional PSRAM, or Mini if you have the smaller uh, version. Then you have a letter or uh, or nothing uh, in the first case uh, if you have the u the module has an ipex connector the picture above uh, if uh, there isn't any any letter then you have a pcb antenna so the the picture below and the last letter was the version so uh, no letter means oldest version the, the intermediate version and e is the last one so this naming convention had a few problems. The first one is that you mix the package and the PSRAM, and the second is that uh, you have to specify the memory size. Uh, uh, you cannot specify the memory size through the part number. For these reasons, the new cores uh, have a new naming convention. They also renamed some of the old cores, no, of old modules. So in this new naming convention, you have uh, the core at the beginning, then you have the package, we can be Vroom, the one that we see, Mini or Solo, if the core, uh, if the module has a single core. Then you have a number specifying the version, uh, the, uh, the usual letter U or nothing for uh, the Apex connector or PCB antenna. And at the end, you have two letters, N and R. Uh, after N, you will see the number of uh, flash, of uh, megabyte of flash, and after the R, the megabyte of PSRAM. So this is the new naming convention, which is a little bit uh, clearer, and uh, all the modules are now uh, named through this convention. Okay, so now I will uh, dive into a few more details about uh, a few selected uh, cores. I will start with ESP32 because it's uh, the most common module right now, it's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, uh, Bluetooth 4, um, so it has a classic Bluetooth, but also Bluetooth Low Energy, which uh, has been also Bluetooth 5 certified, and it has the Ethernet. It's a dual-core module, and it's interesting still because if your application requires classic Bluetooth or Ethernet, you still have to use the ESP32 and not uh, a new core. So the ESP32 is uh, still very interesting uh, and uh, it uh, is also the most robust uh, um, firmware-wise. The other interesting core is the C3. It's the first RISC-V module. It's a single core. It's Wi-Fi Bluetooth, but this time it's Bluetooth 5, so it's only BLE, but it's Bluetooth 5 co complete, meaning it has uh, the physical at 2 megabits per second and also the long range you will find many um, Bluetooth uh, modules uh, on the market. And if you read uh, thoroughly, you will see that they are uh, called Bluetooth 5 core, meaning that uh, they lack the 2 megabit per second and the long range, which are basically the, um, the main features of the Bluetooth 5. The, C the modules based on the C3 has, uh, have the lo lowest price, and the certified modules are available only with four megabyte flash. So the C3 is uh, meant for um, for simple application, uh, but uh, um, we believe that uh, this simple application actually will cover um, a big uh, share of uh, of the market. And we have a lot of stock of ESP32 C3 modules because 
uh, we strongly believe uh, in this uh, in this module. The other module in mass production is the S3. Um, this is the new ESP32 because it's a dual core. It has the same architecture as the ESP32, but the newer version. It's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth 5 modules, and uh, it's um, a very interesting for I, uh, artificial intelligence IoT application. It even has uh, an I, uh, artificial intelligence accelerator, which actually is a vector, uh, vector instruction accelerator. But it also has additional interesting uh, peripherals like the USB OTG and the LCD interface, uh, both the 8-bit uh, parallel interface, so the so-called 8080, but also 16 and 24-bit. So this is for more complex application, and uh, this will replace the ESP32 in all the, the application where you don't require the Bluetooth Classic or Ethernet. Okay, another interesting core is the C6. As I said, it's uh, very similar to, to the C3. Uh, it has Bluetooth 5, uh, but the most interesting feature is Wi-Fi 6, even if it's only the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6. So Wi-Fi 6 is a pretty recent technology. And so let's take a look at why uh, is, uh, it is interesting for IoT application before moving on. So for, for our purposes, Wi-Fi 6 is interesting for two reasons. The first one is bandwidth utilization, and the second one is the power consumption. So right now, um, if you have uh, many low throughput devices, um, your router should theoretically uh, serve all of them without any problem because the bandwidth is actually very, very high. But the problem is that uh, right now the routers uh, work only with time multiplexing, meaning that um, for each time slot, uh, they give the whole bandwidth to each device. So if you have many low throughput devices, it will still uh, cause uh, congestion. To solve this problem, the Wi-Fi 6 has two, two complementary strategies. The first one is uh, uh, more antennas allowing up to eight connections at the same time. But the second and most interesting part uh, um, is that it adds the frequency multiplexing, meaning that now for each time slot, the router can allocate only a small subband to each low throughput device. And so it can serve uh, in a single time slot many devices uh, and uh, um, remove uh, the, the congestion problem. So this is more a system uh, problem that Wi-Fi 6 uh, solves. The other one about consumption is uh, more uh, uh, is related more to the design uh, phase. Uh, mm, so right now, if you have um, a device which sends only a few um, few data um, each and, um, every now and then, uh, you have two two ways to do this, or you can keep the connection. And so each few uh, milliseconds, you have to send a ping to, to keep the connection alive. Or you can disconnect, go to sleep, and when you want to send something, you have to connect again and send the data. The problem is that the connection requires a lot of power, usually more than the data you send. So at the moment, there is no uh, real uh, low power application. The Wi-Fi 6 uh, solves this problem through the target wake time. Um, the target wake time is a way the router and the device um, negotiate the sleep, uh, the sleep time. So the device can tell the router, I will uh, wake up in a month. And after a month, uh, the device can send the data without doing the uh, connection again. And it uh, uh, saves a lot of energy. And with Wi-Fi 6, uh, we can uh, finally have a real low power uh, Wi-Fi application. So that's why Wi-Fi 6 is interesting and why so the <clears throat> um, C6 and also uh, the C5 are interesting parts. Uh, the last core I will uh, show uh, in this webinar is the H2. The H2 is the first non-Wi-Fi module, so it's a Bluetooth 5 and uh, 802.15.4 uh, combo module. It has already been Zigbee and Thread certified. And it's very interesting because it's, uh, it supports the Matter protocol. So we had another webinar about the Matter protocol. You can check it 
on on YouTube if you missed it. Um, but uh, what's interesting about the Matter protocol is that it works on IP, and so it can uh, uh, deliver data through um, TCP, so uh, through Wi-Fi. But for the low power application, the Matter protocol specified the thread um, protocol. And so that's why Expressive uh, announced this core. Um, it's because <clears throat> with this core, you can also develop low power Matter nodes. For the other Matter nodes, you can uh, use any of the Expressive module, like uh, the C3, because they are based on Wi Fi. But why Matter is interesting? <clears throat> Matter is a uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, Matter will become the new home automation standard. It's IP based, it's open source, but the most uh, interesting part is that it's supported by all the big uh, companies like Amazon, Google, Apple, a few silicon vendors, among them also Espresso, a few furniture producers. And uh, <clears throat> so it, has, uh, it will probably become uh, the new home automation standard in a few, in a few months. So with uh, Expressive, you can design both uh, <clears throat> Wi-Fi based nodes, Matter nodes, but also a um, thread based node when the ESP32H2 will uh, go into mass production. <clears throat> okay. So in this last part, I will briefly show you how can you use uh, uh, the expressive modules. <clears throat> so there are two ways to use it. The simplest one is to use the expressive module in a slave mode. So through AT commands, you can <clears throat> take your uh, MCU, connect it to expressive module through UART and send ASCII um, AT commands. Um, you have to check which model to use because uh, uh, since a few months, Expressive only sends pre-programmed modules, uh, um, uh, only sends uh, uh, um, a couple of pre-programmed modules, meaning that not all the memory sizes uh, and all the cores uh, have the uh, ET commands pre-programmed on board. So you have to check it. You can ask us. <clears throat> the other way is to actually program the code uh, program the module and you can uh, do it uh, uh, through usually through C and uh, expressive uh, libraries works on top of FreeRTOS so you have to write tasks for FreeRTOS. So here you can see a simple setup for the IT commands. At AT commands you can connect your MCU through the UART uh, one. You can uh, if you like uh, read some logs through the UART zero and then you can send the comments. The one that you see here are actually the comments you need to set up a transparent uh, a serial uh, connection uh, through a uh, Bluetooth SPP profile. So it's very easy, it's very fast. And if you have uh, a board at which you want to, um, on which you, uh, you, want, uh, you want to add uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity, you can simply add the module and use the, the MCU you have on board to send the AT commands. <clears throat> the AT firmware supports uh, a not only simple connection like TCP IP, but the newer releases also support HTTP and MQTT. Uh, regarding Bluetooth, uh, it supports for the ESP32, the classic <clears throat> Bluetooth classic profiles like SPP and A2DP, many others, and uh, the BLE for uh, all the other cores. If you want to program it, uh, there are two main ways. One is using Arduino. <clears throat> you can use the IDE of Arduino. It's very easy to use and to set up. You can see here how to start a Wi-Fi connection is really only writing Wi-Fi.begin, so it's very, very easy, but it uh, has a limited functionalities because Arduino <coughs> has these wrapper libraries, uh, which uh, hides uh, some of the things that you can do. And also, uh, you cannot use the latest releases because it takes time for the libraries to become uh, uh, to be integrated in the, into the Arduino IDE. <clears throat> the other way is to use uh, directly the ESP IDF, which are the, the official libraries by Espressive, so directly programming on FreeRTOS. And here you can use the full potential. It's a little bit more complicated at the beginning, but starting with the examples 
<clears throat> you will start very, very easily. Here you can use not only the latest development, but also all the frameworks. And so far, um, there are a couple of uh, um, IDEs you can use. Uh, the one that I suggest is uh, uh, OS Code, which is uh, open source, so it's not the old uh, Visual Studio Code, it's the newer open source one. It's very interesting, full of plugins, easy to use, and I really suggest it. And the other one is Eclipse. It uh, doesn't need the introduction. It's very, very used. And here you can use the plugin for Expressive. There's actually a third um, IDE, which is called, uh, called uh, Expressive IDE, but uh, this Expressive IDE is uh, Eclipse plus uh, the plugin already installed in a single package. So these are the options you have to program the uh, expressive modules directly. So before, before ending, I want to mention uh, <clears throat> also the availability of uh, frameworks. So frameworks have special purpose SDKs, which uh, can help you to develop a few specific uh, application more easily. I will mention the ESP AVS, which is used to uh, add the Amazon's voice service to your application, the Skynet, which lets you to do a little bit of speech recognition, which is more word spotting. But anyway, you can control your devices through um, through the voice. SP Who uh, uh, lets you um, do the face recognition, so with the camera, they're doing face recognition. And the other one I want to mention is the ESP Rainmaker. Um, it's a framework for developing uh, very quickly uh, IoT infrastructure, so both nodes and backend server. It's very interesting, and I hope we, we can do a more specific webinar about it because it's very, very interesting. So that's uh, all. Thank you for your attention.